up there in the sky. You'll see them everywhere as we walk through Valletta. They're everywhere all over Malta and the name for them is the Galleria. So it just means the gallery window. So you'll see these a lot as we walk through and they're a big part of Maltese architecture and they're very much what tourists come to see. So good morning. Well, it's nearly noon here and I'm in Valletta in the capital of Malta, the beautiful city, the ancient city, the history filled city. I'm so excited to be here bringing you this video from Valletta, but I'm kind of running late for a meeting where I'm going to go live for Cats of Malta to talk about the campaign and to answer any questions. So after that, join me as I walk the streets of Valletta. So what I love about Valletta is the architecture, obviously. I'm really into architecture and art and sculpture, so I find this city very beautiful. There's always something to see in Valletta, and particularly these walkways that you find. And here's another one just near the Co Cathedral. Back in the old days, I'm pretty sure that they were for merchants and for markets, but these days they're lined with cafes and shops. If you're into Caravaggio, the painter, he was briefly stationed here in Malta for a while and also incarcerated in Malta and in Gozo, they're actually building a Caravaggio wing here. So they're actually building this wing as part of the co-cathedral. So that will be ready soon. And that's a beautiful thing to see in Malta if you're ever going to visit this year or next year. It should be up by next year. So Caravaggio was also part of the Knights of St. John. And then when he was, in, he was incarcerated as well in Gozo, and then he actually fled back to Italy. So it's an interesting story, one that I've also wanted to discover as a director and a filmmaker, but I haven't done that yet. But it's very interesting if you want to look it up about the Caravaggio history and his time in Malta, it's worth a Google. Let's keep walking. So if you go to Emdina or some of the older areas, you will see that these are quite common to have a Maltese door knocker. It's usually in the sign of some kind of cherub or an angel or a knight here. These are very beautiful. They're usually made of brass. I'm really in love with this. I just want to buy it as a souvenir. When you walk through Valletta, the best thing to do is to always look up because the architecture is stunning, not just on floor level, but also above. Behind me, you'll see the red balcony. That is called the Galleria. So the word Galleria comes from Italian. So it's Italian in origin, but the balcony is unique to Malta. You will only see these balconies in Malta and it's a really big highlight for tourists because it's so unique to European culture. So over here behind me, I'm at the top of Merchant Street and you'll see the old opera house. So during the war, this was destroyed and rather than build it up again, they have now they started to use it as a car park, but now it's used as an outdoor theater. It hosted events such as the Valletta Film Festival and other outdoor events, which happen around Malta in summer and also during winter months. So it's a really beautiful space and you can see it's still got the structure there, most of it. There's also a cafe at the bottom and if you go deeper into the public toilets, it's an amazing architectural structure. So we just stopped in Valletta for some lunch. So we just need a little bit of a break and we'll get back to it very shortly. I'm currently working on drafting some interview questions for my next documentary called No Woman is an Island. So it's a film that I want to do about females in Malta, particularly females who are a little bit more controversial in terms of how they present themselves in Malta and as artists. So that's something that we're going to start shooting next week with Malta's only burlesque 
performer. So it's going to be quite interesting. So I'm just drafting some questions for her right now. Due to straight, so I'm going to I'm going to include that then because due to straight street, Malta has a history already of burlesque performance. So now we're back from lunch and we have a ton of work to do for Cats of Malta. We have to email about 20 people each as part of our campaign strategy. So working on that and I also have to email the burlesque artist we were talking about over lunch because she's waiting for some answers to give us some direction for the shoot on Wednesday. So quite busy here and then later on we're going to head out again. So we finished our work for the day. So we're making our way through Straight Street. This is like the notorious street in Malta because it used to be the red light district. These days it's been done up again and it's been given a new lease of life. Now this area here is called The Gut and it was taken over by the VBL group. So they have redone all the bars and restaurants here, making it one of the loudest and most vibrant places now on Straight Street and a go-to spot in Valletta. And an interesting story, like I said, this was the red light district. So there was a lot of burlesque and drag and everything going on here in the 1950s. And it's where the sailors used to come and actually canoodle after work and between work with um, sex workers as well. So my mum and my mum's friend both went to school. It's an art school, not this street on Straight Street, but the one after it, where Public Street. So it's just behind here with the windows onto Straight Street. And I took my mum to that school and she didn't really remember the school. But when I brought my mum's friend here, she told me that the nuns used to tell them not to look out of the window onto Straight Street. They weren't allowed or they'd get slapped because they used to be sailors canoodling with prostitutes and doing all sorts of things in these alleys. So the nuns used to say, do not look out the window because there's things going on in Straight Street that you're not allowed to look at. It's bad. So it's quite funny that that's a story that I have. When I walked her through, she told me that story and I was like, wow. So it gave me a good understanding of what Valletta was like back in the day. And when I walk through Straight Street, I think of The Great Gatsby. I think of Vaughanville and all that kind of exciting stuff that I wish I could go back to that era, the 1930s to the 1950s and just see Malta alive, like America, you know, American culture just alive in Malta. And I think it's really interesting. And Straight Street is very beautiful now. So this building has to be one of the most interesting buildings that you can find on Stray Street. It's actually an old brothel and recently it's been opened up again and it's used as art spaces now for various different exhibitions like a pop-up shop. So I've seen lots of different things here. We came to this gallery last night and we saw some beautiful artworks from local students from the University of Malta. I've also seen photographic exhibitions here. So it's quite an interesting place and quite an interesting use of a building that was once a brothel. It's also said to be haunted, of course. There's lots of stories around this area, along this street, but it's particularly in places like the Splendid. So this is the end of Straight Street, where the cafes and the bars sort of end. And there's some really good places here too. Lots of live music, like smaller bars. And there's one called Yard 32, which we love having a gin. It's a gin bar. So come, let's have a look at a gin bar.
Okay, so we're ending our night here with cocktails at Kami, and I've ordered the Starry Starry Night. Cheers. It's so good. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed Valletta.